It's been two years since Minecraft 1.20 and my last yeah. video, so it's only appropriate for me to make my grand return and give you my new and improved list of the best mods for this new update. Without wasting any time in this intro, here's an example of the kind of frame rate gains you could be looking at by using these mods. I'm on a mid-range gaming PC, I'll leave my specs in the description, and these numbers surprised even me. Vanilla Minecraft's frame rate is still very low compared to mods, and this is definitely a detriment on lower end hardware. So what are the mods and how can you install them? Well, this this video will cover two main categories of mods, performance mods, which reduce RAM usage, raise FPS, speed up world loading, and more, and quality of life mods, which improve your overall experience in the game with cool features and niceties. Now for the other question, how do you install the mods? Well, let's go over it. Start by heading to fabricmc.net and clicking the download button right in the middle. Pick your operating system and open up the file that you download. You will need Java installed to run the universal jar file, so be sure to get that if you're using that file. Once the installer opens, pick your mind Minecraft version and just click install. Open up the Minecraft launcher and you'll see a new fabric profile here. Click on the installations tab and then click on that fabric profile. You can rename it to something more appealing if you'd like, but then click here on the browse button. Select dot Minecraft and then make a new folder with any name that you like. Click OK and then save. Click this folder icon to open up the folder that you just made. Create a folder in there called mods. At this point is when you can download all the mods from the very first link in the description and drag them into the mods folder. If you also want to import your world's recent resource packs and settings, drag these into your folder as well. And now you're free to start up Minecraft. Side note, if you don't want to do this process every time you want to update Minecraft, you should definitely use a different launcher. I recommend Prism Launcher or MultiMC. I personally use MultiMC and it's way easier to do everything. Let's get straight into the performance mods. The biggest and greatest mod you will ever use in Minecraft is called Sodium. It is single-handedly responsible for most of the FPS gain that you will ever get in Minecraft and a lot of other performance mods these days rely off Sodium as a base. This FPS can comparison right here should show you the difference that it makes. I got rid of every other mod in this folder to compare these values and sodium still walks on top of vanilla. Quick thing to note is that the F3 menu reduces FPS a lot so these aren't really numbers that are exactly what you're gonna get. The video settings menu is also revamped to offer a bit of better customization for your options and to add sodium's necessary settings. Alongside sodium a new performance mod has soared in popularity since my last video and that mod is called Nvidium. This mod uses a special feature in new Nvidia graphics cards called called mesh shaders to allow for huge FPS gains even at massive render distances. Now while these FPS increases are cool and all, the only issue is that you need an NVIDIA 16 series, 20 series, or better GPU to run it. AMD, Intel, and older hardware won't work with this mod. So if you're on a new NVIDIA GPU, enjoy that huge FPS boost. Another mod to boost FPS is Entity Culling. Usually when you run around your Minecraft world, there's going to be a whole bunch of mobs that you can't see just running around behind walls or in caves. Vanilla Minecraft still tries to render these entities for some reason, and that's completely useless. So naturally, the entity culling mod culls these entities and saves resources by making the mobs not rendered. They're still there, the game just isn't using unnecessary power to keep them rendered because you can't see them. This is just me here in the editing. I added another mod and it's called more culling and all it does is add more things to cull to the entity culling mod. The concurrent chunk management engine mod allows your computer to take advantage of multiple cores for chunk generation and loading. If you know enough about computers, you will know that your CPU has more than one core that it can use. Unfortunately for Minecraft, the way that it is coded makes the game only able to take advantage of one single core for many operations. So this mod did the impossible, and it adds the capability for Minecraft to use multiple cores to generate your world. This makes your CPU work more efficiently to get tasks done quicker. For further improvements to the game, the Modern Fix mod has you covered. This mod adds a bunch of patches in the background to fix bugs, improve the game's performance, and significantly reduce memory usage. In fact, this mod has a guide that shows you how to play the game on literally just 128 megabytes of memory if you for some reason need that. That's how powerful this mod is. Another mod that you should definitely use with the Modern Fix mod is called For Write Core, and it's another mod that reduces the game's memory usage to have a smaller footprint on your computer's performance. It's especially helpful if you have 8 gigabytes of RAM or less on your PC, which unfortunately a lot of you have to deal with if you don't want to spend an arm and a leg on a new PC. The Dynamic FPS mod is great for people that never close apps on their computer. When you drag windows on top of your game and can't even see it, it seems a bit silly for Minecraft to be squeezing out the highest frame rate possible. Along with options to choose the idle frame rate, you can also choose to disable sounds in the background. Both of these options help the game become less of a hog when it's just sitting in the background doing nothing. Next up is the Enhanced Block Entities mod, which changes the way that blocks like beds, signs, and chests render. These blocks often use block entity models or just entity models, and these models of rendering come with drawbacks like being slow and inefficient. Enhanced Block Entities will alter the code for these and instead make them use fixed blocks 
block models, improving the efficiency and frame rate of these blocks. The best part about it is that there's no visual difference whatsoever for these blocks. They look exactly the same. There's no reason to not have this mod installed. The memory leak fix mod does exactly what it sounds like, but I'll quickly explain what a memory leak is if you don't know. Imagine you need to generate some chunks. The game needs some memory to store them, so let's say for example it asks for 100 megabytes of RAM from your computer. It will use that RAM for a bit, but at some point it won't need it anymore. This is the point where normally the Java garbage collector would run through all the memory and clear out all the unused stuff, the garbage. But memory in a memory leak can't be cleared and will just sit there wasting RAM and doing nothing. Over time, this useless memory will build up and waste performance. This mod fixes a good number of these memory leaks to help your game run faster for longer. And I'll rapid fire through the final performance mods. The immediately fast mod improves model and item rendering and makes them work more efficiently with your graphics card to increase FPS. The lithium mod works on improving server performance to prevent game lag, which helps multiplayer servers and single player worlds because yes, your game does run a local server in single player. And finally for the performance mod section of this video, the Krypton mod optimizes Minecraft's networking stack to again improve server performance and CPU usage. Now let's move steadily along to the quality of life mods. These mods will transform your game into the most ideal Minecraft experience and make everything better. Let's begin this section with the Iris Shaders mod. This mod supports basically every single shader pack that exists and it runs shaders really well. It's built to work alongside Sodium to allow for the highest possible performance with shaders. Take a look at this frame rate comparison. My computer literally gets the same FPS with shaders as vanilla Minecraft does on its own. That's how well all of these mods optimize your game. Iris gives you the best FPS with every shader pack and it literally matches vanilla Minecraft now. You're not even losing any FPS. An important mod to have installed is Mod Menu. If you load up Fabric Minecraft without this mod installed, there will be no obvious way to change the settings of any mods you have. That's why you add this mod. Mod Menu adds a mods button to the title screen and the pause menu. Once you click on it, it will show you a list of every mod you have installed with a button to change the settings of any mod that needs that. Configuring mods is one of the most important elements of the modding process, so I quickly need to mention a key part of configuring mods and also just about running mods in general. Many mods require other mods to work. These mods that are needed for support are called dependency mods. On my mod list, I have them listed in a separate section, and to run all the mods I'm talking about, you will need these too. Some dependency mods are necessary for configuring other mods, and others are just necessary for them to even start. For various reasons, you will need this short list of dependency mods for everything else to work. One of my personal favorite mods that I use is visible in almost every one of my videos. I use it to show my coordinates at the top of the screen, but it's a lot more capable than just showing that. The mod is called Mini HUD, and it's one of the most powerful mods on this whole list. Before I explain everything this mod can do, which I won't go over everything because it's a massive mod, I think now is a good time to talk about configurations. After you boot up the game and mess around with your mods for a bit, this folder called config will appear in that folder you made a little while ago. This folder contains all the data for your mod settings, and if you delete it and launch the game, it will reset all your mods to default settings. Throughout the quality of life mods section of this video, I'm going to recommend some settings that you should change for mods. For example, in mod menus options, I highly recommend changing some options to move the mods button and stuff, but instead of me having to explain the settings every time, you can instead download my config folder and place the files into your config folder. This imports the settings that I personally use with some mods into your game. Okay, returning to the mini HUD mod, this mod is jam-packed with functionality, like being able to show slime chunks, light levels, and so much more. If you just want to use the coordinates, you should download my config folder in the description. Otherwise, I highly recommend exploring all of the features in this mod, as it's one of the most versatile tools in this video. If you use my config and you want to see the coordinates, just press H on your keyboard. Something else I highly recommend is using the Zoomify mod. If you've ever used the Optifine mod before, then you're most certainly familiar with the Zoom feature. It's been one of the most helpful but simple mod additions that millions of players have been using for years, even if the spyglass exists, I guess. Since this mod list uses alternative performance mods to Optifine, as it's been proven to have much lower FPS than Sodium, the zoom feature is missing by default. That's why the Zoomify mod adds an extremely versatile and customizable zoom function. You can add animations, scrolling, or just reset to the Optifine zoom that we're all familiar with. It does everything you could want a zoom ability to do. Next up is the Reese's Sodium Options mod. If you're using a small GUI scale, it can be difficult to see the sodium video settings menu. This mod extends the menu so it uses the whole screen for space, and it makes the menu much better overall. It still works great with mods like Iris and Nvidium because their buttons still show up just fine in this menu. If you're a Windows user, there's a good chance that you absolutely hate the inbuilt full screen option. Every time you click into another window or monitor, the game just disappears completely, and there's literally no reason for it to do this. That's why you should absolutely install the Concentration mod. This mod offers the option to change your full screen mode to borderless, which completely fixes the issue of 
of the game disappearing anytime you need to do something else. Another great mod is the 3D Skin Layers mod. Minecraft skins have an option to show a second layer on parts of the skin called the hat layer. The issue is this layer kind of just floats on top of the main layer, which looks a little weird sometimes. This mod makes the layer render in 3D instead, which looks a lot better, and this feature should absolutely be in vanilla Minecraft, just like a lot of these. Okay, so to anybody who's been watching my channel for a while, you should definitely know by now that Minecraft is absolutely a buggy game. The developers do many bug fixes in every update, but one new feature can introduce hundreds and hundreds of new bugs. In a great attempt to make the game better, the Debugify mod implements a ton of helpful bug fixes to make your game experience better. Some examples include the pumpkin overlay staying when you switch to spectator mode, the fishing line detaching from the fishing rod, and other weird game issues. Some of these bug fixes do actually change vanilla behavior a bit, so if you want the most vanilla Minecraft experience with this mod, I highly recommend my config folder to use my Debugify settings. The Language Reload mod is a complete overhaul to the language switching screen screen, and it removes the dramatic loading screen that you normally get while switching languages. It makes the menu look like the resource pack selector, and basically turns the whole menu into what it should be. This mod is great to have sitting around, even if you rarely ever use the language screen. Have you ever noticed these annoying little gaps when you're holding items like a sword? Well, install the model gap fix mod to remove these annoying transparent lines and items. It's a simple little change to make the game look a little bit cleaner. Let's look at yet another hugely powerful mod, the replay mod. I've used this mod in a whole bunch of my videos, and it's super cool. Cool. You ever wanted to look back on an old game session that you played? Well, assuming you record your session with this mod, you can go and look back at your gameplay anytime. You can render out beautiful videos in combination with shaders and look back on your gameplay basically in spectator mode. It's a feature pack mod that I highly recommend for content creators and anyone who enjoys a throwback once in a while. Side note, I'm aware that there is a new mod out called the flashback mod that's very similar to the replay mod but seems to be more modern, has more features and stuff. I think it's worth checking out. I'm going to leave a link to a video that explains it in depth in the card above and the description if you want to check it out. Another nice mod to have running is World Edit. Chances are you've already heard of it before, but if you haven't, it basically comes with tons and tons of commands and tools to sculpt your Minecraft world to your liking. It's historically been a super powerful mod to build huge maps. It's great to have the mod installed because it only works if you enable commands and it won't impact your game if you don't want it to. Like I mentioned with the 3D Skin Layers mod, many mods on this list feel like they should just be in the vanilla game. Another example of this is the Screenshot to Clipboard mod. A long time ago, Mojang actually added the option to open your screenshot files simply by clicking the chat message. However, if you wanted to send the screenshot to someone, you always had to go digging through your folders to go find the file. The screenshot to clipboard mod simply copies your most recent screenshot to your computer's clipboard, so you can go ahead and easily paste it wherever you want. Back in the 1.18 update, Mojang removed the little hack that existed to give yourself unlimited brightness everywhere. Raising the brightness above its normal limits is great for YouTubers to make it easier to watch because dark videos are really hard to see in, but other people should be able to use it too because it's a great tool to improve your Minecraft experience. So, if you install the Gamma Utils mod, you can now bring your brightness up to anything you want. I use 500% brightness personally, but you can set it even higher for full bright if you want. Another Optifine feature that is known and loved is Connected Textures. The mod that returns this beloved feature for us is called Continuity. By default, it comes with a resource pack for the basic connected textures, like glass, bookshelves, and sandstone, and then another pack to fix this glitch with glass panes. But, you can also go out and find any Connected Textures resource pack that supports Optifine, and it will also work just as intended with the continuity mod. The no chat reports mod will be a game changer for some people. It makes your chat messages unreportable, so your account theoretically can't possibly be banned because the game can't verify that your chat messages are real. Alongside that, it also disables the data collection feature that was added back in 1.18. Unlike older versions of the game, this telemetry is untoggleable, but nicely, this mod just gets rid of the menu and the feature. I spoke in depth about chat reporting, telemetry, and much more in my chat reporting video, which goes into much greater detail about the history of all these features. Another thing to add now, I added another mod, and uh, it's called this. It's a long name, and it goes off the screen, but basically what it does is it reduces the time that you see the loading screen when you're loading into a world or server. This comparison should show you what you need to see. Now, me personally, I like capes, and I'm only 16 years old, so I never ended up at any Minecon conventions to get one. I wanted a cape for myself, so like many other people, I purchased an Optifine cape, because despite everything I say about the mod, it truly is an effort we should commend for the solo developer of the mod to keep it going so long. But when I switched to Sodium, I lost the cape, because the cape is only visible to people using Optifine. Well, fear not, because the capes mod allows you to see your cape once again. If that's not enough, you can also see your capes from other mods that provide them too. It's nice to see my $10 on my screen again. If you've ever 
ever tried to use an alt account on Minecraft, you'll know it's a pain to restart the game whenever you want to switch back to your main account. This is why in-game account switcher exists. It does exactly what you would expect. It allows you to switch accounts simply from the main menu. Great for people who switch between them a lot. You ever try to find a chat message but it gets lost and deleted because it was a pretty old message? Or maybe you had to leave and rejoin the server for some reason. That's why you should install the chat patches mod. This mod allows for a bunch of convenient chat features like extending your chat history, right clicking to copy, keeping it between servers, and so much more. If you play multiplayer, you absolutely need this mod. Also prominent in multiplayer are ping bars in the tab menu, except they don't really tell you anything. Well, that's what the better ping display mod is for. It changes these indecipherable little bars into normal numbers for everyone who prefers to reading instead of decoding. And one more mod that should make your game look just a little bit more lively and good looking is the better statistics screen mod. This mod, unsurprisingly, does exactly what you would expect and improves the statistics screen. Okay, here's what the screen looked like before. And here's what it looks like after. It looks so much better. You can search for stuff so you don't need to doom scroll forever. You can see exact values and it just looks way better. Download this mod. If you have any questions or suggestions for the next video, be sure to comment them down below. Thank you very much for watching.